today I'm talking not using a cover plate die in the way it was originally intended to be used with some of Ulta New's newest standalone die collection. Hey crafty people, it's Tasha, welcome back to my channel. If you like this video then please do give me a thumbs up and if you aren't already subscribed I would love it if you would please consider hitting that button. So, cover plate dies. Yeah, they're intended to cover the whole panel, hence the cover part. But you don't have to use them like that. You can change up how you use it to get a completely different look. And I love doing this with my cover plate dies. So I'm going to be using this and I think it's peaking leaves um, cover plate die. So I've cut an A2 panel from some... Um, it's distress watercolour paper, I believe. Um, and I'm going to cover it in some metallic watercolour. Um, so I'm not cutting from that watercolour panel. I'm going to make that into a background. And I've cut the actual die from some Nina £110 cardstock. And I cut it twice, I believe. Yeah, twice. Um, and stacked them on top of each other. So as you can see from the die, you get, it's like a really thin border that goes all the way around like a frame. Um, and then you get these leaves at the bottom of the, the die. Well, bottom, but they don't have to be at the bottom. You could put them at the top if you wanted to. I don't today, but you could. Um, and I decided that as pretty as the frame might look, I wasn't feeling that today. So I changed up the die. Making our background, I've got, like I said, a panel of Distress watercolour. Um, and I am just spritzing it with some clean, clear water. I've spritzed the back and then put it down onto my glass mat and spritzed the top. Um, and this is just a way that I like to um, use. It will hold your panel flat so you're not going to get the warping. Um, you can use the entire panel and go straight to the edges if you want to because you've got no tape. Um, and I love doing this to hold my backgrounds while I'm painting. So I added some water to the pans that I knew I was going to use as well earlier on so that I could let them sit for a little bit and wake up all the pigment and the mica and the beauty of these paints. Um, and then I'm just, yeah, I'm just putting them on. Um, there's really no rhyme or reason I just want a completely random mix of the three green shades that we have in this watercolour pan set um, and then I also add some gold which makes a really nice um, contrast to the greens um, and then also I add some of the um, it's called sterling silver I believe um, but it's like a it's it's just like a white pearly colour. Um, so I just add a little bit of that in as well. Um, when you're making these kind of backgrounds with watercolour, it's really easy to try to micromanage it. And and I am definitely guilty of that a lot of the time. <laughs> um, but really, the best thing to do is to just leave it. Just leave it. Let, let the watercolour do its job um, and it'll mix together and you'll get something beautiful out of it. So once I was happy that I had colour uh, everywhere I needed it, um, I let this dry. I'm incredibly impatient though so I didn't let it dry naturally, I did with my heat tool. So here you can see I've doubled up that dye um, just to give me a bit more dimension and I've cut the frame from the top so I'm going to glue it to my panel um, I'm just deciding which side I like best um, that you're going to see through the leaves um, then you can also see there I've die cut a sentiment um, and I've stacked that quite thick as well so I'm just going to add dots of glue all over the back of this it did take a while um, obviously it would be quicker to use some um, like adhesive sheet that you add on before you die cut it but because 
I have an issue with lining things up straight. Um, I prefer to use liquid glue because it gives me a little bit of wiggle time. So I put that down on the background and then I left that underneath my Misty while it dried. Then I'm going to trim around the outside. Now originally, I was just planning to just trim the edges and the bottom. Um, but as I was doing that, I decided that, no, actually, I'm going to cut right around all the leaves i'm not actually using the ideal pair of scissors for this <laughs> um i like my mini snip ones for for this type of, of job more but i don't know i just carried on with these um and as i'm cutting i cut too much and i have like a chunk missing from that first leaf so I do swap and, and go to my mini snips and I'm not going to make you watch me cut the whole thing out. Um, but because there was a chunk missing from one of the leaves, I just cut that leaf off completely. So I've cut an A2 panel of, this is like black pearlized paper um, cardstock and I'm going to glue the leaves to the bottom of it. And you can see that's a completely different look from what was originally intended with that die. So I'm trimming, actually cut it a little bit bigger than um, A2 so that I could get my die lined up properly. Um, and then I'm just going to trim it down and then add my sentiment. I quite like the white against the black. Um, it ties in with the white of the background die. Um, and yeah, I think it's really cute. I really like it. And all those extra pieces that I cut off with um, from the metallic background that I made, um, I save those and I will use them for die cuts or something else because waste not, want not. So there, that's a really easy, quick, simple card. Um, apart from the watercolour bit. But the, the card itself didn't take long to put together. And it's just a different way of using the cover plate dies. I hope that you liked the video. Please do give me a thumbs up if you did. And if you aren't already subscribed, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel. I hope that you have a lovely, happy, safe, wonderful week. Stay crafty, guys. Bye.